Hello and welcome to Best Take. I'm your host, Amira Therese. Best Take features film and video work created by students enrolled at Maricopa Community Colleges. At Glendale Community College, students learn video production in the Digital Cinema Arts program. In their introductory class, they get to design, script, film, and edit video productions using single camera production techniques. One assignment was to create a one minute public service announcement. Watch with me now as we see one film about the benefits of this class itself. Visual storytelling is what the digital cinema arts is all about at Glendale Community College. Whether your interests are in screenwriting, cinematography, editing, and much more, the program teaches you the skills that you need to pursue for a career in visual storytelling. Here's what some of the students are saying. Just naturally picking up the camera itself and start filming more insight to what uh, needs to be done out in the field and as well as techniques for filming out in the field. A mixture of meeting people who want to do the same thing, so it's a mixture of also uh, connections at the same time. The department is very, very inviting. It's friendly. The teachers are going to go out of their way to help you out. They're going to put in their 100% effort if you put in your 100% effort. I really like the film program at GCC because we have all the equipment that a university would have. The buying of a few GH4 cameras, they shoot in 4K. Um, and they're DSLR style, so they're pretty versatile and they give you hands-on experience and you don't have to buy a giant cinema camera. The program has definitely given me the tools to work extracurricularly, if that makes any sense. Uh, I've gotten a few freelance jobs with the knowledge base that I have now and uh, even on uh, some feature productions, I've got to have a hand in working with them. It's been a lot of fun. The GCC's Digital Cinema Arts program is a testament to just how good a program can be without a huge budget, how just like a few good teachers can come in and teach everybody what we need to know and we can get great films and documentaries made without like a massive budget. Film integrates a lot of pieces of art, sound, music, pictures, motion pictures, and just to integrate all of those into one piece is unlike anything else. There's no such thing as a bad idea. GCC is proud of its Digital Cinema Arts program that interests many people and teaches students film and video techniques that could lead to rewarding careers. Now we'll see other public service announcements created by this class, including safety tips for street biking and why it makes good sense to use your seatbelt. You're about to enter a place, a place where not a single sound should be heard, and politeness is a given. You're about to enter the library. This, this here is the library. Library with tons and tons of books to fill everyone's knowledge that they need to seek. Shh. Having people just get in the way of each. You gotta go, dude. Well, I'm trying to. You gotta go. I'm, I just need. Go. Well, I guess the moral of the story is don't be rude. Don't be noisy. This is a library. Be respectful of the people around you. Oh no, sir, are you alright? I, I don't know, I think my pinky toe is broken. Paul Walker, Jesus, is that you? Now that's not the way we do things. For proper bike safety, what you gotta do is look both ways before you cross an intersection. And when you've reached your destination, just lock it up.
I was at the theater with my mom. And my life changed that day. Just kept hearing ka-chow over and over again in my head. I can't walk in the road anymore. A queen is coming for me. And he'll get me. One day. Brought to you by the Department of Public Safety. Stow your treasures would be a prey of piracy. If you're willing to wear helmets and pads, gas masks and colored vests to keep yourself safe, then wearing a seatbelt is as simple as a... At Scottsdale Community College, students learn TV studio production at the Scottsdale School of Film and Theater. One example of this class is a video interview with Robert Blackton, who dared to try stand-up comedy in midlife. He already had a successful marketing business where he had counseled many other professionals on public speaking. But this time, it was his turn in front of an audience with the added burden of making them laugh with his original writing. He credits his comedy instructor with the rousing success of his debut performance. Check it out. Hello and welcome to Saguaro Spotlight. I'm your host, Deanne Kincaid. Today I'm here with our guest, Robert Blackton, who's going to tell us about his experience with stand-up comedy. Welcome to the show, Robert. Thanks, Dan. How you doing? I'm good. Now, first of all, tell our viewers a little bit about your background. Uh, my working background is I went to graduate school and started a business in marketing communications. Mm -hmm. And we did all sorts of things like uh, work with designers and heavily writing, speech writing. We did, you know, uh, meeting design, things like that. Uh, published a lot of materials before electronics completely took over paper. And um, so we were there for that transition. And, and we've done nothing but write, 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 so. So you had a lot of writing background. Right. Then you must have had a sense of humor to want to try stand-up comedy. Where did your sense of humor come from? Uh, of course, everyone, stand, uh, you know, their sense of humor comes from, um, I guess, growing up on the East Coast and um, living in a giant pool of wise guys, I think, between <laughs> Philadelphia and New York. Um, How about your family background? Did that contribute? Family background was weird. Uh, my father had a very successful business he built up and it went bankrupt and then 
he became the town bookie to supplement his lack of income. And, uh, you know, so he went from the IRS grabbing his Cadillac to uh, buying another Cadillac later. So uh, he did really good, but it was all illegal and under the table. But Didn't he also own a bar, I think he you told me? He owned a bar and... Um, did you bartend there? I bartended and... Uh, Legally? <laughs> no, I was, oh, all that was legal, yeah. You can't risk your uh, liquor license mm -hmm. when you own a bar. Um, yeah, we had captive audience of drunks and I would get behind the bar and you'd goof with them and, you know, being, you know, the nature of the drunk is they're not going to go home until they're good and hammered. And uh, <laughs> so they had to listen to you, basically. And um, you get to practice your material. And it was, it was a fun experience. And um, How about the East Coast influence? Did that influence your sense of humor? Oh, yeah, sure. The wise guy yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. And then going out into clubs in, say, Philadelphia and Trenton and things like that and finding... Um, you know, just studying. I was studying, mm -hmm. studying, studying because it was, again, a communications effort. You know, uh, stand-up comedy is a, in a unique communications device. And I think theater people call it breaking down the fourth wall. Mm -hmm. Am I right? And mm -hmm. um, where you just, you're, you know, it's just you and them. You're, you're pretty much, I hate to use the cliche naked out there, but you are. You've got to entertain. But what made you want to actually try stand-up? It's different from going to the clubs and that's different from just mm -hmm. hanging out at a bar. Because when you're on stage, I've been told, with the spotlight in your eyes, you've, it's just you. Right. What made you want it? That, that's some fearful stuff there. Who would want to put themselves in that position? <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, it's that I had gone to the club so much and watched, you know, you see people do really well. And some first-timers bomb. And some professionals or guys on the circuit bomb. And for me, I said, you know, I can bomb less than that. <laughs> Let me try it, you know. And so you write up, you know, I wrote up a little routine. And, well, then that was after I went to class. I found a class in town. You did? You, you went to actual class to learn right. some stand-up comedy Here techniques? in Phoenix, yep. And what learn, did you learn there? Uh, how to handle the mic, how to um, present yourself on stage, how to mm -hmm. pace back and forth, how not to overdo things. And, mm -hmm. you know, there's just, uh, you know, um, get rid of the mic stand, things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. huh? mm -hmm. So you don't want to stand behind a mic stand. Um, um, and it was that, and then just write, write, and edit, and edit, and, you know. And rehearse. And rehearse <laughs> like hell. Well, we have a little clip of your first stand-up comedy performance, not the whole performance, but a 10-minute clip from that stand-up performance that we're going to share with the viewers right now to see how it worked for the first time for Robert. Okay, let's roll that clip. <laughs> I don't know if you've been reading Scientists have mapped the whole genome of the woolly mammoth. And they definitely plan on cloning one of these beasts. Huh? I think this is really one of the signs of the apocalypse. Um, first of all, how do you feed it? I've been to Pest Farm. I've never seen Korean mammoth chow. What about monkeys? Okay, come on, boy. Come on. No, not on that neighbor's one. <laughs> this guy over here. Step over the Toyota. Step over. There you go. And uh, go to the woods, good boy. And, uh, but I think, um, well, what do you say when it comes of age? What happens when it comes of age? <laughs> Happy birthday to you. You're alone in the zoo. <laughs> I hope you don't get horny. Because you're the only one of your kind and you can't get laid. <laughs> Something wrong with that. So I'm convinced our future is going to look like the Flintstones. Because as the polar ice melts, they're going to find way more animals to play with. And cloning's like potato chips to these guys. They can't stop at just one. <laughs> So I think we're going to start our day in the future like this. Morning radio. Your traffic report this morning, southbound 51. We still have that overturned brontosaurus in the HIV lane. <laughs> Crews on the scene report, it's now caught fire. <laughs> Motorists are advised to avoid the area. And off to work we go. Honey, it's off to work I go. Apparently I'm a Disney elf. <laughs> oh, 
gonna call in. I'm gonna be late. Uh, pterodactyl's on the car. Pterodactyl. Um, it's, you know. Uh, hey. Yeah, it's the big one again. Uh, give me the broom. Yeah, give me the broom. Hey. Oh, and he's got Mr. Boots. Let go of my cat, you ugly bastard. <laughs> oh, Mr. Boots. I, I thought I thought cats landed on their feet. <laughs> That's it for me. I hope you had a good enjoy. It. Well, there was plenty of laughter, so I'm going to assume that was a successful performance. Oh, I sure felt like it was. Yeah, sure. And I see it was in a, a club because a couple of guys parked themselves in front of the camera, kind of blocked the view for a minute. But so tell me how you felt before the performance. Did you have butterflies? Um, not so much. I expected to have the total anxiety breakdown that that usually accompanies this kind of a thing. Um, but no, because I was so rehearsed. I rehearsed for a good, almost a week before I went up there. I mean, every day, six times a day. I knew the material backwards and forwards. And I thought, you know, I had faith in it. So I was like, I went up there and it was like, okay, do or die, let's do it. This is why I'm here. And uh, When you rehearse it that much, do you get sick of it? Yes. <laughs> yes, you do. And it's like, you have to pull people in the room. He goes, let me do this for you. And you're like, I need an audience of one here. And you know, like, okay, and tell me if this is funny. And, and you have to rely on that. And you know, and the people that I used said, yes, it's good, it's quality, get up there, you know. And but you, you only know for sure when you do it in front of a live paying audience, that's is that right. the case? And yes, it is. So you are always rolling the dice, but, you know, and because I had no repertoire. A lot of guys that have been doing it forever yeah. Yeah. Uh, know what material works no matter what, no matter how hostile the crowd is, how drunk, or, you know, a uh, bunch of gals doing a, you know, bachelorette party, you know, they're, they're brutal sometimes. It can be a and challenge. That ain't the word, but yes, yes, yeah. So how did you feel after you did the successful performance? You hear the laughter, you know you hit the nail on the head. Um, how did you feel? Completely elated. Completely yes? elated. Yes. It's a, an incredible high for a couple of days. I, it was, I was... Two uh, days? Uh, oh, at least, yeah, two days. I felt like, you know, I, I was the mayor of the town. You know, I, I could do no wrong. You know, it was, uh, it was fabulous. You it was a, a high, like, you know... The success. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're going to find out exactly how this performance has influenced Robert's work. But first, we're going to take a short break for a message, and we'll be right back. So please stay tuned to Saguaro Spotlight. So it's up to you to do your best to conserve water. Check your dishwasher's efficiency. Recent models can save nearly 5,000 gallons of water a year. Turn off the water while you shave, and you can save more than 100 gallons a week if you shave. Doing one thing each day will help conserve water in the desert. And remember now, only a drop. For more information about water conservation in the desert, visit azwater.gov. Welcome back to Saguaro Spotlight. I'm here with Robert Blackton, who had his first experience as a stand-up comedian, and now he's going to tell us what he's working on now. Okay, I'm working on a crime comedy novel that oh. has consumed my life, <laughs> and uh, it's, um, it's all about a bunch of um, East Coast thieves who work in a bar, and they, yeah, how about that? Surprise. Um, and they try to make a gigantic score, and it doesn't work so they try different 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 crimes i can't give anything away here but yeah there's some funny funny stuff in there is this based a little bit on your experience in new jersey perhaps <laughs> yeah yeah there was quite a few bums and ex-convicts <laughs> that used to come in and out of our place and uh yeah there was uh give you some good characters that from your from your younger days absolutely yeah right out right you know right out of a movie some of these guys and the, you know and that's how they were and uh so yeah, and they were always looking to make a quick score, but they were never smart enough to pull anything really <laughs> substantive off, you know? So um, 
So tell me how the experience of learning and doing stand-up comedy has influenced what you're writing now, because obviously there's a comedy aspect to the crime comedy novel. Right. Well, not so much the comedy, but the writing itself, because oh. stand-up has become, well, a little of both, I guess. Um, stand-up is um, all about brevity, and you know, you're expected to, or your goal is to make the audience laugh every 15 seconds, which is tough. And um, you want to learn how, when you learn how to edit that tightly for a performance, you're also learning how to edit everything you do as, as quickly as possible. And um, that's what I brought, you know, it just helped me hone my editing skills for the writing of the book. So that and how to, how to implement comedy is a little bit different than it is just writing a straight ahead story. Right. So comedy, like they say, comedy's hard, right? And uh, So will this book be out soon? Uh, no plans on publication date yet, but we're working on this. We're working on this. Well, maybe we'll get a chance to have you back on the show sometime and talk about your book once it's published. Okay. Well, you twisted my arm. We'll bring <laughs> it back and we'll hold it up right here. How's that? Okay. Thank you. Thanks. I want to thank our guest, Robert Blackton, for sharing his experience today. I'm your host, Deanne Kincaid. Thank you for watching Saguaro Spotlight. Tune in again next time. So how many chapters have you got done? Oh, 20. Yeah. 20 chapters. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Trying something new in life is one thing, but where do you turn when you want to find what you're really good at? Now we'll screen Find Yourself, where a generic self-help book review inspires a burnout to try new things. This film was written and directed by PJ Kelbel for the block class, also known as boot camp at SCC. Here, students learn pre-production, production, and post-production in just one semester. Kelbel shot this on 16 millimeter film, which made him nervous as all his previous work was done with video. But he did extensive pre-production with storyboards and a shot list, which made everything go smoothly.
Thank you for watching Best Take. I'm your host, Amira Therese. Tune in again for the next edition of Best Take, and you'll see more exciting film and television work from the students at Maricopa Community Colleges. Yeah.